Good morning. Today is Monday, the 4th of February, 2013. Here's all the news it's worth about talk, worth talking about today. Uh, okay. In La Prensa, uh, the numbers came out for 2012 uh, from the um, United Nations. Um, uh, reports on the numbers of uh, violent crime and murders in Central America. Now, there's seven countries in Central America. Panama is in third place of being the country less violent. I mean, middle of the pack, okay? Um, now, the way they do this is the number of murders per 100,000 inhabitants. So they take the population of the country and the number of the number of murders that occur in the year, divide it, and come up with just this index of how violent the country is. The least, con the least violent country in Central America is Costa Rica, with 10.3 murders per 100,000 inhabitants. Second place, Nicaragua, with 12.6 um, per 100,000. And all of these numbers for all of these countries are an improvement, by the way. And then in Panama, it's at 18 uh, per 100,000. So that puts Panama in third place. But then if you look at the if you look at the chart for Panama. In 2004, which was when they hit a low, was at 9.5, and then 2005 and 6 was about 11, and then in 2009 it spiked up to 23.2. So there was this this sharp ramp up, 13, 18, 23, and then the last from 2009 it's been dropping steadily every year, 23, 21, 20, now down to 18. So the last four years there's been a downward trend in Panama or an improvement, and uh, that's a good thing. The most, and to put this in perspective, the most violent country in Central America is Honduras, where they had, what was it, I, think, I believe it was 45. This is a long article. I'm looking for the numbers in here. I believe it was 45 murders. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I take it back. That was Belize that had 45 murders per 100,000. Honduras has 85.5. So, um, I didn't think that, that uh, Honduras was going to be more violent than Guatemala, but apparently it is. Okay, anyway, so uh, Panama doing better and improving over time. Okay, there's been some uh, um, controversy over the designation of a woman named Lourdes Castillo as the uh, new member of the board of directors of the Panama Canal Authority. Um, in short, these designations for this board of directors for the Panama Canal Authority, they have like two meetings a year. They only get paid while they're at the meetings. They basically get paid like 500 bucks when they go to the meeting. So in, in, in total, this is, this is really kind of like a, I don't know, it's not really a working job. It's just, they just basically pencil whip and sign off on the crap that the administrator does. And the, the administration, the, the Panama Canal administrator is the people who, they actually run the canal. This is just a, I don't know, I'm going to say formality, but, you know, they haven't, well, you, you, you get the point. Anyway, this woman, Lourdes Castillo, it turns out there was this, like, who is she and what is, you know, she's a business person who's, you know, kind of worked her way up. And uh, there was there was all kinds of uh, innuendo and, and uh gossip, not really, but basically the people at La Prensa and La Estrella were just slamming away on her. It turns out that she is the niece of one of the people, one of the martyrs who died on 9 January 2000, or 1964, and that's pretty much why she was designated, because it was a designation of the people, which was what it was supposed to be, and not just a, a club of old white guys. So the fact that she's young and she's a female and she's not in the, you know, the Rabi Blanco club, uh, was pretty much why she was designated, or so the story goes. Anyway, um, that is part of the uh, what's being talked about today. Okay, the other thing that's being talked about today is there's like five or six ministers that, that are in the Cambio Democratico, and they all want to run for president in 2014. So it's like, okay, if you're a minister and you want to run in a primary, you can't like be working and also be doing politics because if you like pick up the phone and say hello and it turns out to be political during office hours then you're using state resources so they have to be really careful about this conflict of interest thing of using state resources while you're doing politics so there's this debate do you have to resign if you're a minister or can you just take a leave of absence and then if you don't win the primary then you can just come back to your job so for here burillo who's the uh, the small business administrator 
she's saying, well, she's still trying to decide whether or not she's going to uh, take a leave of absence or resign. And then Minister uh, Relo, uh, Romulo Brooks, pardon, uh, he said that as soon as I, at the, as soon as I make a uh, formalize my candidacy, that he's going to uh, resign. So anyway, that's that's a discussion. And uh, legally speaking, they can do the leave of absence thing. There's nothing wrong with that. And uh, actually, if five or six ministers resigned all at the same time, that would create some headaches for the uh, the, the, the administration, the government. We're trying to manage the country for the last year that they're in office. Okay, uh, here in La Critica, two people drowned in Chiriqui. Uh, they were fishing in a lake. Now, get this. Two men in a boat, one of them 32 years old, the other one... I believe was a 16 year old kid fishing in a boat, uh, don't know how to swim, don't have any flotation devices, boat tips over, they fall into the water, they drowned. I mean, you would think, I mean, you couldn't, if I didn't know how to swim, you know, I'd be terrified of the friggin' water. You know, I wouldn't go anywhere without a flotation device. Um, this is just sad, but it's also stupid. Okay, here's um, in the telemetro. The uh, president, uh, the, the the minister of the presidency, Roberto Enriquez, he came out because they're they're getting ready to do on the fifth of February this week, uh, tomorrow actually they're getting ready to do this uh, this this march to uh, commemorate the uh, the death of the guys who were doing the protesting last year in uh, Chiriqui. Um, and what they're saying is there's a political agenda behind these protests. Well, of course, there is the, the the protests were pretty much bought and paid for by the Panamanistas, and um, uh, these these a lot of these protests are just flat out. They're not they're not authentic. They're not genuine. Where people really care about what they're protesting, because I've seen those and I've seen hundreds of thousands of people on the street in Panama protesting against Noriega. I know what it really looks like when it's authentic and genuine. When it's bought and paid for, you can tell, you know, and that's what's that's what's been going on here. And yeah, these guys died, but you know, uh, and that's unfortunate. But yeah, there, there, without a doubt, there is political agenda behind most of the protests here in Panama. Um, all right, let me burn through these the rest of these relatively quickly. In the siglo, they are going to increase the fines. There has, when you look at the the the, the amount of uh, traffic violations that have been going up. Things for like driving drunk, talking on a cell phone, speeding, um, and uh, not having your paperwork in order, like not having a driver's license or not having the proper documents on your car. Those things have been going up a lot. So they've been doing two things in order to cut down on that. They're handing out a lot more tickets and they're going to increase the fines. Uh, let me see. They've got, this is another long article and the, the numbers are in here. Okay. Speeding right now, $50, going up to $150. Driving while drunk used to be 250, going up to 500. So all of these fines are going up. They've also issued more than 8,000 tickets in 20 days in this one area. So um, basically, have your documents in order. Don't break the rules. Don't speed. Don't drive drunk. Don't talk on your phone. And they're going to continue issuing tickets. Here's the numbers on the tickets. In 2011, they issued 36,000. Oh no, I'm sorry. This is accidents. In 2011, there were 29,000 accidents, and last year there were 36,000 accidents. So it's gone up 5,000 accidents in one year, and then the government has decided that they are going to shut that down. So uh, don't get caught in a crossfire. All right. Uh, a man was found dead uh, in his own vehicle next to the road that leads to the Centenario Bridge. Uh, he had uh, pictures of his family member, family members in the car with him. He had a gun with him. He had one gunshot to the head. It looks like a suicide. They're investigating it. Um, that happened this morning. And then last but not least, uh, the fish market is closed today for cleaning. Um, so don't go to the fish market because it's closed. Okay, so that's all the news for today. Uh, Monday morning, the 4th of February, 2013. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.